So basically, planning is hard. So I assume reinforcement learning is also hard. So the results that we have for reinforcement learning in POMDPs are, are more empirical and algorithmic results. They're not really formal results. Uh, but it's still something that people try to do sometimes, right? If you have some kind of robotic system or, or agent system that's trying to figure out what to do and the world is the world that it's in is partially observable, then uh, you have to do something like this. Yeah, solve the halting problem. Well, no, no. Getting the exact optimal answer is undecidable. Well, is, there, is it decidable that you can get near optimal? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, then I feel better. Why don't you stop depressing me and like tell me what to do so that I can uh, sort of feel better about this whole approach? Sure, no problem. All right, I'm going to ask you what to do. So, okay, so in particular, do you remember we had kind of two main flavors of reinforcement learning algorithms for MDPs? Do you remember what those were? There's value iteration and policy iteration, right? Yeah, those are planning algorithms. But for reinforcement learning in an MDP, the two main branches, model-based RL and model-free RL. Oh, yeah, sure. Right. Well, that was obvious. Uh-huh. And do you remember <laughs> Do you remember the distinction between them? Well, one used a model and one didn't. Uh, one learned a model and one didn't. Okay. Well, the same thing. You can't use a model if you don't learn it if you didn't know it. <laughs> That's true. That's very well said. So you learn a model and then you use it versus don't bother to learn a model and just do it. Um, I think the, the little quip was, the world is your model. Whose quip was that? Probably um, Rod Brooks. All right, so we can actually use this same kind of distinction, this model-based RL and model-free based RL or model-free RL in the POMDP setting, where in model-based RL, you actually try to learn the POMDP and then you plan in it. And in model-free RL, we try to map observations to actions. And we do that iteratively over time. So we don't actually build the model, but we do try to figure out, okay, when I see this, this is a good thing to do. Well, can I ask you a question while we're here before you jump in? So one of the things that, you know, we learned in AI class 150 years ago is that if you don't know what's going on, you can often figure out what's going on by taking specific actions that guarantee you end up in some state that you actually know. Sure. So like, e even if you're blind um, and you're trying to get to a particular place in the room, you could do stuff like, well, I'm just going to go left for 15 minutes, and then I know no matter what happens, I'm going to be against the left wall. Then I know where I am. Yes. And then I can do things. Do either of these methods do the equivalent of that or an analog of that? Either could, in fact. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Again, the, <laughs> the guarantees on whether things actually work in this space are non-existent. So it's not the case that we can always say, oh, yeah, it's always going to do the right thing. It's going to figure out the, the simplest way of getting to a known state and then behave from there. But yeah, I mean, I, I've seen both these kinds of algorithms do that kind of thing. Okay, good, good. Well, that's promising.